Hey guys, so we're gonna get started on a tutorial that covers us editing the images that we took last week in our live stream. So if you didn't already watch the live uh, studio demo that we did last week, uh, Quinn and myself, Sarah, we went through two different shots in the studio. And so today we're gonna actually look at editing those pictures in Lightroom and Photoshop. So Quinn is our resident Lightroom editor and she is going to be editing through um, her picture using all of Lightroom. And then I am going to be editing through my picture using all just Photoshop. So it's gonna be a clever way to kind of just sneak a peek into what our workflow actually looks like. So we're gonna walk through what that might be for these particular images. And we're also gonna speed up a couple of these parts that are a little bit boring, like picking the best picture, um, but we'll, cl we'll clip together all the meat of it um, so that you guys really learn a lot from this tutorial. So. Uh, we're gonna get started, and if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below, um, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Okay, cool. Hi guys, um, like Sarah said, I'm Quinn, um, and I'm gonna edit my shot that I took of Sarah in the studio last week. These are all of my shots that I took of Sarah, um, and I'm gonna kind of scroll through these and pick my favorite. So we're gonna look through, um, these are before I lit up the background with those extra um, little two by three soft boxes um, where before I wanted more contrast. And see, this light is way better. So I'm gonna pick through one of these. That one's good, that one's better. Um, see, because this one has all this um, glare in Sarah's glasses right here. And I like this one better because they have way less glare, so I'm not gonna have to worry about editing that out. And her pose and her facial expression is really nice, and I don't have the corner of that softbox, so I don't have to worry about editing that out either. So this is gonna be really nice to edit in Lightroom. So I'm gonna hop over to the develop module, and we're gonna start in the basic panel. And first of all, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn it black and white because I know I wanted this shot to be black and white. That's why I had Sarah wear this, um, and that's why I had this white background. So I'm gonna turn it black and white. The default in Lightroom is to automatically mix your black and white uh, color tones to the way that they think that I'll like it, but I don't like it. So I'm gonna reset that by holding Alt on my keyboard and this reset option pops up. So I'm gonna hit that so that I can adjust them by myself. I don't need Lightroom to do that for me. And then we're gonna hop back into the basic panel. So I'm gonna boost my overall exposure, just increase it a little bit because the whites are not as white as I want them to be. So I'm gonna increase this just a little bit. Pop that guy over, whoa, that's a lot. You just have to remember <laughs> that um, sliders are sensitive and photos more often than not look worse before they look better um, just because of the way that I'm adjusting, the order that I'm adjusting my sliders. Whoa, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Okay, I like that. <laughs> um, so see how these whites are really, really nice and white now? But now that I did that, my blacks are not nearly as dark as I want them to be. Um, so I'm gonna go down here to my black slider and anchor those. So drag those guys down so that my blacks are nice and dark. Okay, that's way better. Um, and then my highlights, those are the parts of the image that are not white, but they're close. And same with the shadows are the parts that are dark, but not quite black. So I'm gonna bring down my highlights a little bit because they're a little bright, like on Sarah's face. Bring those guys down a little bit. And then I bring my shadows up to compensate for how dark I made my blacks. Okay, I like that. Now I'm gonna go down to my tone curve. And the tone curve is just kind of a more um, aggressive way to add a little bit extra contrast um, after the basic panel. So it's just, I'm gonna add a little bit more. And this curve, the way it works is up here are the highlights and down here are the shadows. So I'm gonna grab my highlights up here and the tone curve is kind of frustrating simply because it's really sensitive Oh God, get away, okay. Um, adjust my highlights a little bit. And like I said, things look worse before they look better. Um, I'm gonna add a point down here for my shadows and my darks. And I'm gonna bring those down, I like that. I'm gonna grab my blacks and I'm gonna clip my blacks because I want them darker. 
All right, I like that, I'm feeling it. Now I'm gonna add a point in the middle, just kind of soften up um, the whole thing. All right, I like that. Now I'm gonna do some fine adjustments. Um, so Sarah's forehead is kind of a big hot spot. Um, it's really bright on her forehead. The catch lights in her eyes are not nearly as bright as I want them to be, and also her feet are way too dark. Um, and that's just because the light was above her, so her knees and the rest of her body blocked that light and it became a shadow down here at her feet. So I'm gonna add a little bit of light down there. So let's do this, oh my God, <laughs> let's do that first. I'm gonna, um, I always do precise adjustments, really zoomed in just so that um, I can prevent any spilling of my um, paintbrush. So I'm gonna increase the exposure over here on her feet, let's go about there. And I'm gonna use a nice big brush so that I get a really overall um, adjustment and I get nice even um, exposure. And I have a little bit of spill over here. So I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna erase the adjustment I made over here because that's not where I wanted it. And pop over to her other foot and I'm gonna do the same thing. Right now, I'm gonna navigate up to Sarah's face Hello, Sarah. Beautiful Sarah. Hi, guys. Um, and I'm going to make a new um, adjustment. So I'm going to hit new. And I'm going to decrease the exposure on her forehead a little bit. Um, OK, so I'm just going to make this adjustment on Sarah's forehead. So I just softened it up a little bit um, and made it not quite so bright. So it matches the rest of her body. Um, and then <laughs> <Body>. her bo <laughs> matches the rest of her body. Um, and then I'm gonna make one more new um, adjustment. And I'm gonna increase the exposure and the contrast a little bit on her eyes. Cause I want that catch light um, in her eyes to be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller just to match the size of her eyes. And I'm gonna paint in here. And it's really subtle, but it's just enough to kind of um, make that catch light a little bit brighter. I'm gonna actually increase it just a tiny bit. Let's go like, that's better. Okay, then I'm gonna close out my brush and let's zoom out. And then let's just see the difference I made. So I'm gonna turn on and off my uh, fine Ooh. adjustments and look at the difference. Look at her feet, her forehead and her eyes. So this is without it and this is with it. See how much better and natural that all looks. So the whole goal here was to make it look natural like I didn't do any like fine Lightroom adjustments. Um, and that looks really good. I like that way better. It's really nice and subtle. So that is my final product. I really like the way that that looks. Um, and in the studio live stream, I mentioned that I wanted to expand the white background. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't want to do that simply because I kind of like the tight crop. I think it fits the rest of the photo. Um, and if Sarah, say, were a business person and wanted a f headshot that looked like this, it, they wouldn't want all of that white background. They would want this to be a nice tight crop so that she could use this on a website or you know, a business profile, um, anything like that. So I like the way that it's cropped. I'm really uh, feeling it. So that's my edit. Awesome. So I'm actually going to take over now and um, I am going to work through editing my photo, but I actually am going to take one last look at Quinn's because I have a super good idea and I'm going to try to edit out some of those weird footprints on the bottom of the background. Um, so I'll do that for you guys too before I launch into my own photo. So uh, thanks Quinn. That was awesome. Thanks, All right guys. guys. So if I want to get started on like just making this background look a little bit cleaner. What we used is a paper called a uh, seamless. That's the seamless background paper, which is awesome because then you don't even see like that weird swoop behind it. Um, it just looks like a nice simple white, you know, infinity wall in a sense. Um, so what I wanna do is just clean it up because obviously there's been some people standing on this background. So what I wanna do is just bring this photo into Photoshop because I think Quinn's edit is perfect, but uh, I just wanna show you guys how we would easily get rid of that. So I'm gonna open this photo in Photoshop and the way that you can do that is you can go up to photo, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And everyone who's subscribed to the Adobe Creative Cloud plan, actually, um, if you pay for Lightroom, you also get Photoshop. That's kind of the way that they do it, which is great because most photographers will use both at some point. So it's $10, or $10 a month, it's like $9.99. And so if you have Lightroom, you probably have Photoshop if you're on the subscription Creative Cloud plan, which is awesome. So I'm just gonna go photo, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And the keyboard shortcut for that is actually uh, Control E. 
and it'll just automatically pop open in Photoshop. But what I'm gonna do is now that it's up here, I'm gonna make a copy of my photo because Photoshop is what's called a destructive editing program as opposed to a, um, you know, editing program like, like, like Lightroom where you can constantly go back in time and you can fix anything that you did earlier. Um, Photoshop, it's as soon as you do an adjustment, it's stuck like forever. So what I want to do is just duplicate my background layer and I can do that by clicking on it and dragging it to the new layer icon down in the corner. And by doing that, now instead of working on those original pixels, I'm working on a duplicate of it. And so then if I mess something up, I can always just delete that layer instead of having to go back and just reopen the photo, which I may or may not have the information for anymore because I destroyed it. So that's the goal is that we always can go back and fix our um, edits and change them. So by making a duplicate, that gives me the ability. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here and the way that you can zoom in easily is control plus. And then if you hold space bar, you can actually use the little hand tool and navigate down to what you're looking for. And what I'm gonna do is I'm honestly just gonna use the clone stamp. Um, it's the best tool ever because you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. The keyboard shortcut for it is S on the keyboard, but I'm gonna go over here and just click on it. It's the weird little stamp looking thing. Click on it and then I'm gonna make my brush kind of like biggish sized because I want it to um, just fit in with uh, that area. Uh, these footprints are pretty large. So what I can do is I can hold Alt or Option and sample from the area that it's good and I can pick it up and I can just cover the area that's bad. And notice how it's just slowly but surely covering up that area, but look what happened when I got too close to my leg. What it's actually doing is it's picking up my leg from above and it's trying to cover it up. And if you hover over it, it'll give you a preview of what it's gonna look like. It's gonna give me like a second limb, not good. So I'm actually gonna control Z back um, just a bit and control Alt Z to get two steps back because once I started getting that leg in there, I knew that it was too far and I need to resample from a different area. So I'm gonna make my brush a tiny bit smaller. Uh, I'll click here just to sample from another area and just come in and you know clean that up a little bit. It's super easy to clean up a background like this um, because we have so many clean areas to pull from, which is awesome. Uh, so what I'm doing is just you know moving around, picking the area that I want to replace this with and picking it up and just putting it down where I want it. It's pretty easy. Um, the difficulty with this kind of um, edit though is that our light is so specific and we have such a smooth gradient. So you wanna be very careful about always picking where you're sampling from an area that looks pretty similar to um, the area that you're gonna pick it up from or put it down on. Um, and that can get kind of easy to mess up really quickly. Like you can even see this spot over here on the right is a little bit darker than the surrounding areas. So if something like that happens and you don't really feel like you have an area that you can click on that's like perfectly clean, uh, that's you know fitting in the tonality range of the area you're trying to cover, you can actually grab the healing brush tool. That's the little one that has the Band-Aid. And what the healing brush tool will do, which is really cool, is it basically works exactly like the clone stamp, except if you alt click from an area and then you put down those pixels elsewhere, it's actually gonna try to read the area around where you're painting as well and try to match it with those tones. So sometimes the healing brush can be a little bit more um, easy in that sense. It doesn't require um, that you sample from an exact tonality region, um, but at the same time, you give up a little bit of control because you're trusting that Photoshop will be able to figure it out for you. And so it you know, it just kind of depends on your preference. So I'm just kind of mousing around here, adding my foot where it doesn't need to be, making a couple mistakes, control Z every time because control Z is the best thing ever. All right, so that's just a simple cleanup job. There's a couple of things that I'd probably tidy up, but look at the difference here if we turn the background on and off. Notice how all of that crud just kind of goes away. Pretty cool, right? Um, so that's what I would do. Um, so I'm gonna get out of this and I'm actually gonna work on my own picture. If I hit save in Photoshop, it's actually going to save right back into Lightroom, which is awesome because um, then when I'm in Lightroom, you can just click on here and the other version of your photo will pop right up once it's saved. So it's really great to work between the two Adobe programs because they work nicely together, um, which is quite wonderful. Um, and it'll easily just transfer that photo right back into Lightroom because I opened it from Lightroom in the first place. So pretty cool, easy, easy little difference.
Okay, so now if I want to start on my own photo, I'm going to go back up and scroll up to these photos of Quinn, and I'm going to uh, find the one that's best. And we've got quite a few fun options here, but what I'm going for is just like a clean, simple shot of Quinn. Um, kind of feminine, uh, almost ethereal in a sense, but still moody. Um, so I'm going to just kind of cycle through, see which one I think is best. All right, so I think the one that I really like is this one because I have good light and also I don't want this little blossom right here to intersect with Quinn's chin. So this is a nice um, option. And I'm gonna set the label to red because then I know that it's my favorite. Um, and I did that by hitting the six key on my keyboard. So now uh, I'm gonna take it right into Photoshop. So if I control E on my keyboard, uh, it's gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop for me and it's gonna uh, open the photo with it. So it's a really easy way to transfer photos between the two programs. Okay, so now that it's loading up in here, what I can do is um, I can honestly do all of the same adjustments I can do in Lightroom. Lightroom is a little bit easier to do those adjustments, but in, for the purpose of this tutorial, I wanna show you guys how you can make them in Photoshop as well. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm actually just gonna make a background layer because I know that I'm gonna end up doing some you know, fine-tuned uh, pixel moving with clone stamping and things like that. So I'm gonna make a background layer. Um, and in this background layer, I'm gonna do some just simple cleanup. So, uh, there's one thing on here that I want to start with, so I'm going to control plus to zoom in again. Um, Quinn's eye is nice and sharp, it's perfect, but she's got a couple of minor zits up here. So what I'm going to do is just grab my healing brush tool, um, and I'm going to sample from this area, and I'm just going to paint over those small little blemishes, just to clean up that area. Um, and I'm gonna keep sampling from different spots that are gonna do a better job. I don't want an eyebrow on her forehead, so I'm gonna find out you know, exactly where the best place is. And again, you wanna keep uh, the texture in mind here because I don't want it to look too fake. Um, but I am gonna do a really cool technique in a minute called frequency separation, and I can kind of clean up some of that texture and color separate from themselves, which is one of the best um, ways to retouch a face. It's awesome. So I'm gonna just kind of like sample those things out. It's pretty painless. Um, maybe get this little lumpy right here. Quinn's got pretty amazing skin, so there's not much I need to do. Plus, there's only so much of her face that's lit up, which is kind of cool. Um, I love this shot. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna really like it once I finish it up. I love editing, so sometimes, you know, the editing is even more fun than the shooting, so that's what we're gonna work through. Um, now that I've got my clone stamp kind of ready to go, though, or my healing brush, I've done that process, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, create a frequency separation set of layers, and I actually have an action that I've made that does that, which is awesome because it kind of speeds up the process, but I wanna show you what's on, um, what's in this action so you could make it yourself. And actually, I did a tutorial quite a ways back that was even more thorough on frequency separation. So uh, frequency separation here, I can click on this frequency separation action that I've made and I can uh, hit uh, play to actually make it happen on this particular picture. But basically it's a saved grouping of um, actions that I've done in Photoshop that make a preset. So what you do is you make two layers. One of them will be their color layer and one of them will be our texture layer. And once that layer is made, you have to make minor changes to those layers so that you can only adjust certain parts of them. So one of our one of our layers is actually only going to adjust the color in the photo, and one of our layers is only going to adjust the texture. So if I hit play, it's gonna make those for me. And again, uh, go back to that tutorial if you wanna find out more about it, um, or just comment below and we can tell you more info. But the uh, one thing I need to set here is how blurry I wanna make it. So if I kinda, mouse around here. I want to see just how much blur I need to make so that I don't see any detail in her skin. Um, I'm actually going to come up here. I don't want to see any of those changes. So I think honestly coming up to like nine, that's a pretty like good blurred amount. Um, we'll hit okay. And then now it's making my texture layer and now we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is just move my background layer back below because um, that's where it goes. And I'm going to work on the color layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just, um, I'm gonna lasso out some areas that I think need to kind of blur together. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool. And the reason why this is awesome is because frequency separation allows me to work on color and texture in someone's face separately. And then if I go up here and I go to um, blur Gaussian blur, it's gonna do a really nice um, minor, blur of the colors um, 
and it's gonna blend them together. So instead of having like some spots on her forehead that are like darker, lighter, redder, yellower, it's gonna blend those all together. And look how it does that separate from the texture. You can kind of watch as I drag this further up and it's gonna make it just subtler. Um, and then I can deselect that and look how simple that is. Like I literally did not do much there, but it made a big difference. And then if I go into texture, and I wanna actually remove some of these textured areas on her skin, I can use the clone stamp, um, which again, the keyboard shortcut for that is S, and I can hold Alt and sample the areas that I want to replace, and look how it's just gonna like only work on the texture. It's not adjusting color at all, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, and I'm gonna take this texture and I'm gonna just kind of bounce it around. Again, only a sliver of her forehead is sharp, so it's gonna be kind of a tricky one for me to uh, make look realistic. So I might have to kind of command Z a couple times to get this looking like what I want it to. Um, because again, I don't want it to look, you know, fake. I just want it to look um, a little bit cleaner, a little bit softer. So I'm actually gonna back out and I'm gonna make my uh, opacity of my clone stamp a little bit less. So I'm just gonna remove part of the texture instead of the whole thing because I think it started to make her look like a Barbie and she's not a Barbie, she's a human. So I think that's honestly pretty close. That's pretty perfect. So you can see if I um, hold down the Alt key while I click on the eyeball of my background copy layer, you can see the before and after of just that frequency separation and look at the magic that it worked on her forehead. Um, it looks pretty darn awesome. So then I'm gonna back out and if I hold Control zero, um, it'll zoom me back out to the initial um, uh, photo ratio, so I see the whole thing. And then the last thing I wanna do is I wanna work with some curves. Um, so I wanna just brighten this thing up a little bit. I think I want it to be a little bit more like that light feminine look. Um, I don't know how much I really wanna do. I kinda wanna go like here, and then I'm just gonna make a subtle S curve. I don't wanna bring it all the way down because it starts to look really weird. Um, but a little bit of a deeper black here. I might bring up my bottom of my curve just to add a little bit of a matte feel, but if I do that, I wanna bring it up and then bring this bottom point down even more. Wow, that looks terrible. I'm probably not gonna go quite that much. Um, so I'm gonna just kinda like play with it, see what I like. And when I'm doing this, when I add more contrast and I change this curve, it's actually gonna change my saturation a little bit. So one thing like Quinn said earlier, it, it, sometimes when you're editing, it sometimes gets worse before it get, gets better. Um, and I know that. So if I'm making these changes and it starts to look terrible, I know that I can make up for it in other tools. I just wanna kind of start with this and see how far I wanna go. Um, one thing about the curve is it's really easy to mess things up really quickly. So you want to try to keep your line as close to that center diagonal line as possible because that's going to be the most uh, realistic looking uh, photograph. I might bring my whites down just a hair, kind of mute them a little bit is like how I like to call it. Uh, it makes it a little bit more of a soft photograph. And again, we're just kind of softening up the intense contrast in here. And I can show you the before and after by clicking this eyeball. <laughs> I think I had more contrast. It's so always funny when I when I play for a while figuring out exactly what I want. Um, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go into the uh, color balance and that's in this little like, you know, weighted scale thing. And I'm going to just change the color balance to a little bit more of a blue feel. Um, it's gonna make my background a little bit more purple. I think I kind of like that though because I think it's a little bit more feminine and interesting. I don't want all the yellow to be gone because I think it's really nice looking. Um, and I think I probably wanna move it closer to like the um, blue side or the cyan side of things. So I want like warm, a little bit blue greenish, um, and that's gonna be a little bit more what I'm going for. But I don't wanna lose the red in her lips. So one thing I might do is actually come back and grab a hue saturation layer and just work on my reds. So I can come in and just work on these reds and I wanna bring the saturation of those up, just a hair, cause I don't wanna lose the life of her skin, you know? So notice if I go too far, it starts to look crazy. Um, so I'm gonna back it off, kinda go like here-ish, um, and I think that looks pretty, pretty realistic, bring some of the life back into her, um, just a tad. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I, again, wanna just kinda like turn it off, make sure I like the adjustments that I did. Um, definitely that color balance is a big one cause that tungsten light I was using was pretty intensely yellow. Um, and I like this look a little bit better. So I think that's pretty close. I might actually go back to my curve, open that up again. And I don't like how much um, my blacks have been destroyed with this curve that I did. So I'm gonna just kinda bring it down a little bit more. Um, 
maybe like that. Look how soft and nice that is. Then I can go into my um, levels actually, and that's another thing that you can play with just to kind of make my blacks even blacker. Um, I'm a sucker for contrast. Oh man, but now I'm not sure what I want. Um, I think, honestly, just a tad. Just a little bit, kind of anchor them a little bit. Um, but then I think that's pretty darn close to what I want. Um, the only thing I might do is, I'm kind of thinking I kind of want to crop off the top a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna clear my ratio here and I'm just gonna kind of freeform this, kind of see where I want it to go. Um, I don't want to crop off the bottom. I might crop like here, I could just crop off that mic. Mm, no, I don't mind it. Okay, cool. Pretty sweet, right? Um, so I think this is a pretty nice weird shot. Um, it kind of looks like natural light in the studio, which is what I was going for. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned a lot. Um, okay, so that's our edit. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you, or we hope that you learned quite a bit. Um, if you, once again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or send us a message or um, anything, you know, that you want to ask. We will definitely get back to you and answer any questions you might have. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned and look out for more um, live streams. We're going to try to do live streams kind of like the one that Sarah and I did last week, um, at least once a month. At least not necessarily about the studio, but about, you know, something like uh, that you guys might be interested in, uh, interested in as photographers. So, yeah. So, uh, if you guys like the video, go ahead and hit the like button down there. It helps us out a lot and subscribe if you want to be alerted for new videos that we put out. Uh, thank you so much for watching and we hope you, uh, stop by again.